scientists are racing to create AI that is more human-like, and one way that they can do that is by modeling dopamine-seeking behavior in humans. Modeling after human reward-seeking behavior could lead to more effective autonomous decisions in robots, and AI too. One of the problems that we have with analog type robots in AI is that they either have to work with a defined framework of what decisions they should make, or they make them up as they go based on the reflection of what they've learned. Each one has its drawbacks. Dopamine-seeking behavior is one of the reasons why ADHD folks congregate on this app. It is a dopamine dispenser app. More broadly, humans do things that make them feel good. They don't want to antagonize somebody else because it doesn't give them that dopamine response. Or, you know, they antagonize others because it does. Similarly, you can model a robot in a dopamine-seeking behavior, and that fills me with dread and I'll explain why, but I need to explain ADHD. I have ADHD, and it makes my existence hell. People with ADHD essentially have a broken reward system in their brain. There are two main causes. Either you have a broken response system, so your ability to perceive dopamine in your brain is bad, or you can have less dopamine altogether, you can have a deficiency in it, and it is lifelong. As a result, it does become very difficult to function. You don't get the benefit of completing a task, you don't get the benefit of dopamine when you're paying attention because you know that there's a reward. Everything feels awful all of the time and you're just doing something to try to alleviate that. This also leads to lifelong problems with bad behaviors that might elicit dopamine. Things like substances can increase dopamine temporarily, but ultimately they deplete it, causing a positive feedback cycle where you just keep needing to try to do that thing. That can look like all sorts of stuff. That can be an addiction to exercise, for example. Anything that makes you feel good is what you're chasing after. This is another reason for executive dysfunction. When you're looking at completing a task and you can't see that there's going to be any reward, it's really hard to get started. That feels a little bit contrary to the idea that ADHD is also a impulse control issue. So you have that part of your brain that says you should do something, and then you have another part of your brain that's activated at the same time that says, hey, you should not do that thing. In ADHD people, the part that says, hey, don't do the thing is also a little bit broken, which also results in fairly poor behavior. It's really, really complicated. If any part of the entire cascade of reward behavior is broken, you could have something that looks very similarly to ADHD. This has led to a lot of problems with diagnosis, looking for exactly the genetic cause, because there could be all sorts of causes that result in pretty similar behavior. If you want a little bit of a tip as someone with ADHD and suffers from executive dysfunction, how I motivate myself to do stuff is by telling myself, A, I like this task, it is just a why, or B, telling myself, I hate having this thing weighing over me. It will finally be gone if I just do the thing, and I do the thing. People have often asked me how I can be so damn good at time management. The truth is, as soon as a task falls on my plate, I do it because I want it done so that I don't have to stare at it being not done. When it comes to robots, if you really want them to model human behavior, you can grow a tiny brain from stem cells. And hopefully that is a brain from somebody who has a normal reward system. They give it a little dose of dopamine when it does something right, and then it keeps on doing that dopamine-seeking behavior. And there's lots of questions I have about the ramifications of that including how a brain organoid made from my stem cells would behave. I, I have no idea. I'm interested to find out. Perhaps slightly scared. Which brings me back to modeling robotic behavior based on human responses. How do we know that it encapsulates a true human response and not just the spectrum of human behaviors? Could we accidentally code in psychopathy into an AI model? Why do we really want conversational models that match human behavior so much? At the basis of it, I also really don't want a robot to be more functional than I am in terms of reward-seeking. 